The name that is getting the biggest buzz in the NFL right now, quarterback Jaden Daniels. What are they saying? Well, you'll hear that plus a whole lot more on Thursday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for March 7th, 2024. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And welcome in Raider Nation to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. To get the latest edition of the show, Susan becomes available as always. If you're checking us out on YouTube, thank you. We appreciate that in a major way. The show continues to grow each and every day, and we definitely appreciate the support. Without you and my man Ari, the show doesn't grow. And without Ari, the show's not on YouTube at all. So big ups to my man Ari. Make sure we're looking good and sounding good each and every day. At Ari Produces on Twitter, you can hit him up. You can hit me up as well at your boy Q254. And we got the Lockdown Raider Podcast voicemail line at 707-654-4693. A lot of great feedback we've been getting all week long here on the Lockdown Raiders Podcast. Your calls and texts will come up in segment number three. Segment number two, with free agency right around the corner, legal tampering period begins on Monday. We'll talk about it, but we're not going to talk about it in the way that we traditionally would, where it's, hey, this player is a free agent, go get him. This player is a free agent, go get him. This player would make sense for the defense. This player would make sense for the offensive line. We're not going to talk about that, but we will talk about free agency as it pertains to Antonio Pierce being the head coach of the Silver and Black. What does that mean? You'll hear that coming up in segment number two. Here in segment number one, we want to talk about Jaden Daniels, Jaden Daniels, and Jaden Daniels. Why? Because everybody's talking about Jaden Daniels. We'll get right into that after I tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. I'll tell you a lot more about them later on in the show. And before we really deep dive into Jaden Daniels, I want to start off with a tweet that I got on Wednesday at Jude Gardner 12 hit me up and said, Hey Q, I don't know how much you read into the betting lines or not, but something cool I noticed. Before the combine, Jaden Daniels to go to the Raiders was plus 1100. After the combine, he's now plus 600, almost cut in half. Seems like many people, including the sports bill, feel, the for, sports books, feel like Jaden Daniels to the Raiders is a real possibility. McCarthy to the Raiders is actually plus 650, so the sports books view Jaden Daniels to the Raiders actually more probable than McCarthy. Just something neat that I noticed that's from Jude Gardner 12, and uh, that's a cool little thing. And you know, it's funny the sports books don't always get it right. But more times than not, they have a pretty good idea. And I remember when the sports book started leaning towards Jaden Daniels was going to win the Heisman Trophy. Once they made him the odds on favorite, guess what? He went on to win it. Again, I'm not saying that the sports books are going to get it right 100% of the time, but I do say, as I live in Las Vegas, there's air conditioning in the desert for a reason, <laughs> right? I mean, it's just, it is what it is. But uh, that's an interesting little note. I thought that uh, that was cool that Jude Gardner. 12 on Twitter hit me up and let me know about that. And I do pay attention to the lines. I don't pay attention to, or I didn't pay attention to that one though. So thanks so much for bringing that to my attention. Now, as I mentioned at the top, there's a lot of different people, a lot of different outlets, potential teammates, uh, talent evaluators, coaches, scouts, a lot of folks talking right now currently about quarterback Jaden Daniels. So I want to go through and let you hear from some of the folks that are talking about him, including RG3, Robert Griffin III. He works for ESPN now. Of course, he was the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, uh, went to the Washington, well, at that time, Redskins, number two overall, had a career, got cut short because of injury, and now he's on ESPN, does a hell of a job as an analyst. He was talking about Jaden Daniels and where he thinks – he would fit really well in the National Football League. Here's RG3 talking about Jaden Daniels. For Jaden Daniels, listen, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I think Jaden Daniels should go to the Las Vegas Raiders and be with the coach that recruited him to Arizona State and Antonio Pierce. Jaden Daniels makes the Raiders a playoff team immediately this year if they go and get him. Him mm. with Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, and Michael Meyer is a good start. Jaden Daniels is an explosive playmaker, and he's exactly what the doctor ordered for Raider Nation. So there you go. RG3 talking about Jaden Daniels, and he'd make the Raiders a playoff team immediately, and that's where he should go, uh, teaming up with Antonio Pierce. Obviously, they're familiar with each other from Arizona State. And that's been something that RG3 has been saying for a while. He was a guest on my radio show, and he said the same thing. 
He, uh, I asked him about Jaden Daniels just straight up, and he's like, man, that would be a great fit. Jaden Daniels to the Raiders would be fantastic. Well, Max Crosby, he had one of his charity events here in Las Vegas on Wednesday, and uh, one of the reporters that actually went out there uh, to check out the event asked Max Crosby about Jaden Daniels. Here's what Mad Max Crosby had to say about the potential quarterback of the Raiders if they're able to make moves and go get them. Here's Max. Yeah, you know, obviously people, you know, <laughs> everyone's rumored that's right. going to be the guy we trade off or whatever. Um, but we'll see. Um, he's an incredible player, obviously, um, at the collegiate level. Um, the NFL is a whole different deal. Um, so, yeah, he, he knows he's got a ton of work to do. I've obviously I've watched a lot of his uh, his film from you know past couple seasons, and you know he's got every talent and ability you can imagine. Um, but it, the work starts when you get in here, when you get in the building, when you get drafted. So, um, all that stuff doesn't matter. There's been a lot of Heisman winners that you know have not done what they were supposed to do. There's been a lot of players that weren't as great in college and end up being great players. It's just about when you step in the door, are you ready to work and, and be the best version of yourself? And, um, you know, I feel like he's definitely one of those kids. He's high character, um, works his ass off. I've, you know, got, you know, had the opportunity to meet his mom a few times as well, and she's she's great. So, yeah, wishing him the best. You know, obviously we don't know what's going to happen with the draft and everything, but, yeah, we'll see what happens. So I took a lot from what he had to say. That was less than a minute, but that answer right there – Clearly, the conversation of Jaden Daniels has been going on in the building. You heard what Max said. You heard talking about everyone saying that we're going to trade up for him. And I know that that's what people on the outside are saying, like myself and other media members. But he's also hearing that from somewhere else. He's hearing that from in the building. He also talked about watching a lot of film. He talked about meeting his mom. I mean, he talked about a lot that made you think and made me think, at least, as I listened to that about four or five times, that obviously the Raiders are doing uh, their due diligence and probably seeing what they have to do to get up to the top three to go get Jaden Daniels. Clearly, he is the number one target for the silver and black. And as RG3 said before Max Crosby, he would make the Raiders a playoff team. I believe that immediately when he steps onto the field, I think he's just that stinking good. Who else thinks that Jaden Daniels is that stinking good? How about Lewis Riddick? I got a lot of uh, respect for him. He also works for ESPN. Last week at the scouting combine, he went into great detail about Jaden Daniels, what he brings to the table. We all know Caleb Williams is going to be the first quarterback taken uh, in April, April 25th in Detroit at the first round of the draft. We think, right? He is going to be the first quarterback taken. Well, how close is it between Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels? Here's Lewis Riddick on that. Every week you saw Jaden Daniels operate with maximum efficiency inside the pocket, outside the pocket, decision-making, tight window throws, touch passes, changing the launch point in terms of design rollouts, creating when uh, outside of structure when things broke down. The mechanics with what he he throws the football, nice tight compact release. It was never it was never one of these long wind up type of releases or an abbreviated release that made it look like he was pushing the football. It's just very smooth. It's very consistent. His ability to make good decisions in the RPO game, his his ability to break big plays in the running game. Look, the the one thing that people really want to knock this young man on is some of his decision making in terms of taking big hits. And he took some absolute haymakers this year that. Really, I, I think these are the kind of things that you can coach him out of. Mm. But outside of that, oh. you cannot find many flaws with the way this guy played this year. You just can't. And he had the respect of one of the greatest coaches of all time, if not the greatest coach of all time, and that being Nick Saban, who basically said, we couldn't find a way to stop him. We simply had no answer for this guy. And I think his game translates perfectly to the NFL. And I'm telling you this, from what I heard in term, terms of some of his meetings that he has had, he comes off super smart. He knew exactly what this offense uh, entailed last year at LSU. He could explain it from A to Z. And he's someone, I'm telling you, there are people who think that this guy is the best quarterback in this draft. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to go number one, but I'm cl I, I right now have him basically neck and neck. And really what it's going to be, it's going to be about the comfort level that a team has with him that's going to decide it, ultimately. And he may wind up being the best pro. We'll see. But I'm right there right now. These guys, him and Caleb, to me, are one and one. So I thought that was a nice little breakdown from Lewis Riddick. Very detailed breakdown on Jaden Daniels. And I love the fact that he talks about he can create, he can throw, you know, he's ready. He can go step into, uh, you know, a, a team right now. And, and his game would translate to the National Football League. I love what I'm hearing from guys that I really respect about Jaden Daniels. So you heard what Lewis had to say about, you know, the one knock on him is the hits that he's taken. And I've talked about the hits 
here on the show as well, right? I've said that he, he got hit way too many times, took some big time hits that he probably shouldn't have taken uh, last year at LSU, but he got up to his credit, got up, you know, was able to make it happen, went and won the Heisman Trophy, played in the SEC. Obviously, that's a very tough conference in college football, and he was able to hold up. Well, here's John Beck. John Beck is his private quarterback coach. He was actually on the NFL Report with Steve Weiss and James Palmer from NFL Network, and he responds to James' question about Jaden size. You'll hear the question and his private coach, John Beck, his answer. John, when you look at Jaden, and we're looking at his size right there, too, that's one of the very few questions about his game I hear when I ask around the league. Is this one of those things, you've been around so many quarterbacks, work with them, seen them grow from their college maybe body to what their NFL body can become. Is he one of those guys that can put on, I don't know, 10, 15 pounds in the first maybe two years? And how do you kind of gauge that or maybe make sure teams can understand that about his body type? Yeah, that is a question that, you know, people do ask. I, I, th- I think when you see his frame, his frame is going to be easy to add weight to it. You know, I think that sometimes those guys that are the leaner okay. guys just kind of genetically, but they have that elite, you know, s- speed and that kind of like shiftiness. Like you don't want that guy being the 220 guy. You're not going to say, hey, well, we really need you to sit back in the pocket and be able to take those hits. Like he's probably always going to be a little bit on that leaner side because of his game. But his frame is definitely capable of putting some weight on. And I think that that kind of happens naturally. I've seen with guys, they have kind of that like mm. fresh out of college body. It's really only a few years removed from that freshman high. You know, hey, I, I graduated from high school. I got that 100, you know, 88 to 195 pound freshman <laughs> body. Well, that all of a sudden just continues to progress. And now all of a sudden they get in their mid 20s. They start getting 26, 27 years old. And now, that five, 10 extra pounds, it's just there because the body's maturing. But, you know, when you stand side by side with Jaden or you put him next to people that are 210, 215, you see from a frame standpoint that that's going to be easy for him to add on as the years go. And as long as he can maintain his athleticism and speed while adding those pounds, then great. So a pretty good detailed answer right there from Jaden Daniels, private quarterback coach, John Beck. He also coaches up Michael Pennis and J.J. McCarthy as well, but he was on the NFL Report with Steve Weish and James Palmer. And Steve Weish was a guy that was a guest on my radio show on Wednesday, and so I had asked him about that question. He had uh, responded to, you know, the size thing, and he said, hey, look, he, he played in the SEC and he survived. I'm not really worried about his size. So I just asked him, you know, what is he hearing about Jaden Daniels? Where do you think he, you know, falls into the mix what's the separation between Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels and I thought this was a great answer from Steve Weiss from the NFL Network I think the work on the field speaks for itself from what you saw at Arizona State when he came there as a freshman and lit it up to what he did in the SEC and, and the big thing that that Beck pointed out that you know when you watch him play you look at the numbers you talk to people is the completion percentage this guy had a 70 percent completion rate at LSU I mean he, he's not playing against patsy corners he's not <laughs> playing against you know, a, a bad, you know, bad defense is bad pass rushers. Now he has two of the best wide receivers in the draft, but he's getting them balls, you know, long balls. They're not just, you know, short hitch routes and things like that. So to have that type of completion rate and then the type of touchdown to interception rate that he had has got to just be driving, you know, NFL evaluators. Like we've got, <clears throat> we've got to try to get our hands on this guy because the biggest numbers that when you talk to NFL, you know, coaches and stuff about quarterback accuracy, touchdown, interception, and, and and the completion percentage, and he checks all those boxes. So there you go. Uh, he's talking about his body of work uh, speaks for itself, right? It doesn't really matter what the talent evaluators are saying out there because what he was able to put on film in the SEC at LSU really stands alone and speaks for himself. So, uh, you know, I, I thought that all that was good stuff. I thought it was really worth bringing to the table. RG3, Max Crosby, Lewis Riddick, John Beck, uh, the Jaden Daniels private quarterback coach, and then Steve Weish all talking about Jaden Daniels all in the last few days from last week at the Combine to the last couple days this week. Thought it was something good, a little collection I wanted to bring to the Locked On Raiders podcast. So uh, I don't know where he's going to go. I don't know if the Raiders are going to have enough ammunition to get to where they need to be to be able to go get him. But, I mean, the tea leaves are are pointing to Jaden Daniels to the Raiders. Uh, Obviously, a lot of Raider Nation, including myself, wants to see Jaden Daniels to the Raiders. Clearly, some of the teammates or potential teammates like a Max Crosby is talking about Jaden Daniels, and he's hearing everything that's going on about Jaden Daniels. Can the Raiders find a way to make that happen? We'll know about that sooner rather than later. But that's what I got for you for segment number one of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Coming up segment number two. 
What do players around the league want to do when it comes to free agency, and how bad do they want to play for Antonio Pierce? What does that mean? We'll talk about it in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about a couple sponsors here on the Locked On Raiders podcast, including eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guarantee fit only available to U.S. customers. I also want to tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is Game Time. You should have to worry about anything when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, theater events near you. They got great last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time will take the guesswork out of buying tickets. You can actually see the view from your seat before you buy them, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All-in prices show your total up front. You know you're getting a great deal before you check out, and you can buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last-minute seats. The only guy who doesn't need this is Vegas Jess. He always gets last-minute seats, and they're always fantastic. You just got to hang out with Vegas Jess. But for anyone else, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create that account. Redeem code is Locked On. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, all one word, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to get into... Antonio Pierce, what he means as the head coach of the Silver and Black as it pertains to free agency. What do I mean by that? Well, it was funny. I was scrolling through Twitter as I was preparing for my radio show on Wednesday, and I saw a tweet of an Instagram live session. Yeah, I know. Put that together. An Instagram live session actually ended up in my Twitter feed just because someone tweeted it out. They took like a screenshot of it and tweeted it out. And what it was was running back Rashad White. He was on Brandon Ayuk's and Jaden Daniels Instagram live. So they were all on live. They were talking boom, 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 back and forth. Remember, all three of these guys are Arizona State guys. Obviously, Antonio Pierce has the Arizona State ties. So it was Rashad White, the running back, plays for Tampa Bay. Brandon Ayuk, the wide receiver, he plays for the 49ers. And Jaden Daniels obviously hasn't been drafted yet, coming out of LSU by way of Arizona State. So on this little Instagram Live that got screenshotted, Rashad White says, everyone on this call is going to the Raiders, including me. So, of course... Raider Nation took that and ran with it, and that's how it got tweeted into my timeline on Twitter and thought, oh, my gosh, these guys all want to end up with the Raiders. Now, Brandon Ayuk has said that he wanted to go to the Raiders before uh, after the Super Bowl, matter of fact, when he didn't get the targets, and then he probably didn't feel like he's going to get the contract extension to San Francisco. So he's like, well, I guess back to uh, Las Vegas, obviously meaning the Raiders and trying to team up with his uh, former college coach in, in Antonio Pierce. So... That just kind of got the ball rolling, got me thinking. Now, later on, Rashad White uh, hit Twitter and said, bro, relax, it's called joking on live with your boys and trolling like y'all do. I'm very happy where I'm at, 100. And he was responding not to me, but he was responding to some Tampa Bay fan that started flipping out when they saw that on Twitter because that's what fans are going to do. They're going to take everything at face value. Now, I'm not saying that that means that those guys are going to go, but it did get me thinking, when was the last time you remember players saying publicly, man, I want to go play for the Raiders? Like, think about that. When's the last time that someone said, hey, man, you know, the destination that I really want to be at, the team that I really want to play for is the Raiders. And I'm sure that there were a player or two here or there, but I feel like it's more and more. And I already felt like the Raiders are in a good position for free agents because of the stadium, where they're at in Las Vegas, no state income tax, obviously the practice facility, the cafeteria, the weight room. I mean, all that is second to none. You saw and heard about the NFLPA report card. The Raiders did really well outside the coach. The coach is gone. But the coach that's there now is Antonio Pierce. It got me thinking, how many players across the league as free agency is going to open up next week and the tampering period next week is going to say, you know what? I saw what those guys were doing, those bloodthirsty pirates were doing at the end of last year. I saw what that locker room was like. 
I heard Antonio Pierce yelling out Raiders. I heard and saw him having fun and those guys having fun in the locker room and enjoying themselves and a coach allowing the players to be them, but at the same time expecting, you know, dominance and expecting excellence and want to go win. I saw that team beat the Chiefs, the last team to beat the Chiefs before they went on to win the Super Bowl. I saw that. I want to be a part of that. I, I it, To me, I wonder how many players really want to be a part of that and want to be a Raider, right? And I guess we'll start to find out next week during free agency. The tampering period opens up on Monday. But I threw that question out there to Raider Nation on my radio show, Unnecessary Roughness, on Raider Nation Radio 920 on Wednesday. And we had a, a bunch of calls, a bunch of texts, and a lot of folks thought, like, yeah, uh, who doesn't want to play for Antonio Pierce? He's just that guy that gets everyone fired up and charged up. And I can agree with that, right? I mean, he gets me fired up just listening to him. Sitting in the media room while he's talking, even when he was introduced on November 1st, it was like, man, I walked out of there like, man, I want to run through a wall. Now, if I attempted to run through a wall, I knew how it was going to end bad. Right? I was going to run through the wall, and the wall was going to win that war. But you just you, you got that ec- extra energy feel like, man, yeah, I, whatever he's you know putting down, I'm, I'm buying. I'm, I'm picking up what he's laying down, man, because he's, he's that guy. You know, he's got that infectious personality, and you know, I, I gravitate to guys like that. And a lot of times people say, oh, Q, you're that guy. You got that infectious personality. So I understand what that means and what it looks like and what it sounds like, and that's who AP is. But being a former player, I feel like – He's even going to be able to, you know, have those connections. People know what he's about, what he's like. You know, obviously, coming from the college game as well, there's a lot of younger players that he recruited, uh, like a Jaden Daniels, like a Brandon Ayuk, like a, um, you know, like, like a, a Rashad White. And so those guys all are very familiar with him. So I could see them all wanting to play, even if they're just saying that and just talking that talk just to be on Instagram Live and having a really good time. But it feels like the Raiders are in a really good position that they can maybe, you know, get a couple extra really good players that want to go and be a part of what Antonio Pierce has going on, right? I mean, look, Josh McDaniels is obviously a guy that, you know, no player is a big fan of, right? I mean, there's some that, you know, respect what he's done. And uh, like even Brian Hoyer said, oh, I wouldn't have, you know, even been playing if it hadn't been for Josh McDaniels. I knew his system. But again, this this is just different as far as I'm concerned. It just feels like, and I remember the time, especially when the Raiders were still in Oakland, that they had to super overpay to go get free agents. And still, they got mid-free agents. They didn't get the big fish, right? Because who wanted to go play, practice in Alameda on those bad practice fields? Remember when Jack Del Rio took over as the head coach and he had those whole practice fields redone and taken care of and upgraded and the weight room upgraded and said, hey, we need to make this better, make this more attractive for free agents? Obviously, that's not a problem anymore. But I haven't really seen and heard players come out publicly and be like, yeah, man, I definitely want to go play for the Raiders. And it feels like now, I mean, hell, to see a a quarterback that's about to be drafted very high in April's draft and Jaden Daniels be in the locker room following the Week 18's game, I mean, that that tells you a lot, right? I mean, you heard him. uh, If you were listening to this podcast earlier this week, I played the clip where he was talking to Josina Anderson from CBS Sports and said, man, if AP calls me and and he's on the other side and saying that they're drafting me, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be excited, though. Right, because he's got that love and respect for AP. I just think that him as a coach and the respect that he gets around the league and the the just what people have seen from a distance, I think he's one of those guys that has created an environment that a lot of people want to be a part of. Again, we might watch free agency next week and the Raiders strike out on all the big names that they want to get. But I don't think so. I think that they're going to be very successful in free agency. I had Vic Tafer on my radio show on Wednesday. He thinks that they're going to be very aggressive early. So don't be surprised on Monday when the tampering period opens up. All of a sudden, a couple minutes into it, like we always find out, boom, one of the first big fish to come off ends up going to the Raiders. I think that we're going to be very active, be talking about a lot of different players that, uh, you know, the Raiders have had interest in. So, you know, we here on the podcast are going to be having a lot of fun uh, talking about some additions, whether it's in the offensive line, defensive line, uh, you know, if it's a cornerback room, who knows? But I just think that we're going to have a lot to talk about next week based off of what's going to go on in free agency. But it just was something when I saw, you know, that Instagram live. And like I said, it was tweeted into into my timeline just to see what Rashad White said. Everyone on this call is going to the Raiders, including me. It made me think, how many players around the league really do want to be Raiders? Interesting stuff. That's all I got for you for segment number two of today's Lockdown Raiders podcast. Coming up in segment number three, your calls and texts. What's on your mind? 707-654-4693. Before I get to that, though, I did want to tell you about Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? 
Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com boost. Subscription fees applies and now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of their first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and texts. You're off that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Let's start things off with a text from Cruz in Oregon. Hey, Q. Cruz from Oregon here. Uh, I think if Nix is there, we should take him. I feel a lot of the perspective of him is so inaccurate. You're getting a kid who has a different OC every year of his collegiate career, and when he finally found stability with that head coach at Oregon, he skyrocketed. He has also single-handedly won games for the Ducks during his tenure. That dude is flat out a competitor. I've been saying his biggest improvement that showed this year was processing the defenses he faced and making the correct reads pre-snap. Landon gave him the keys to the offense, and the dude was in full command. You add in the fact that he was also the number one dual threat quarterback of his recruiting class, so you get his ability to extend plays. I personally would take him over McCarthy because we haven't seen him in full command. I really like Penix too, but the fragile history is a real risky risk at this point. In order, I think our quarterback option should be is one Daniels, two Knicks, three Penix, only because of injuries. And then if we can't land any, just take a flyer on Spencer Rattler. Let me know what you think, Q. As always, Raider Nation for life. That's Cruz in Oregon. Thanks for the breakdown. I do appreciate that. And, yeah, I mean, there's so many different options and different flavors of Kool-Aid as far as the quarterbacks go. Uh, I think that everyone could find their favorite, right? I mean, Bo Nix is not my favorite, but I do think that the last two years in Oregon, he was great. He really was. I mean, the numbers that he was putting up, the touchdowns, the interceptions he was putting up, where he put Oregon in the position to go up against uh, Washington multiple times, including in the Pac-12 championship game, I thought was fantastic. I really did. So I don't blame uh, you for saying that Bo Nix could be the guy. I'll tell you right now, and I know this is a very small factor and it really should not play a factor at all. I did not like the way that, you know, he came off at the combine when he was talking to Vinny Bonsignor, when Vinny attempted to talk to him. Just, I, I just thought it was so unnecessary. But again, that doesn't have anything to do with his playing. That was just like the last impression I got of him. And I, it's just one of those lasting impressions. So I don't like that. But again, that has nothing to do with how he could play on the field. I'm sure he's a hell of a player. And like I said, what I saw from him in the last couple of years at Oregon uh, shows that he's a hell of a player. So I wouldn't be surprised uh, if he's high on not only the Raiders list and the Raiders board, but a lot of different teams board in the National Football League. So Cruz, uh, thanks so much for that. I do appreciate your great intel from a guy who clearly watched a lot of Oregon football. Up next, got a call from Rich in the 831. He's calling to talk about Michael Penix not going in round one. What would it take to move up to number uh, to number four or move up in round two? Also brings us Spencer Rattler, Byron Murphy, and more. Here he is, Rich, Rich in the 831. Hey, what up, dude? It's Rich from the 831, man. Hey, um, you know, after listening to that guy from the Athletic that you had on today, um, he was saying that Penix probably go in the second round or later. Um, I was looking at another mock draft from um, a writer from the AP, and same thing. He didn't have the Penix in the first round either. Uh, he had McCarthy, Knicks, all those guys. But he had the Raiders taking Murphy. Now, my question to you is, um, if that happens, Raiders would obviously, or in my opinion, should trade up to get Penix in the second, if possible. Um, what do you think it would take to trade up? I was thinking, like, going up to number four where the Cardinals were at because – the previous three teams and most mock drafts are taking a quarterback. Uh, what would it take to move up in the second? Yeah, I know it's a lot less, um, but I think at the end of the day, uh, Penix is a good consolation prize, so to speak. I, I don't look at him as a mandate. Um, I agree with you. I'm, on, I'm not sold on JJ. Um, I kind of like Spencer Rattler. I know AP's got a like, connection to him as well, uh, but I kind of like Spencer Rattler if, if – um, we have to draft the quarterback, you know, in the later rounds, um, meaning not the first round. But I, I'm, I'm sold on Murphy. I'm okay with that. It's not a bad pick uh, at all. Uh, just wanted to get your take on that, man. Uh, appreciate the show as always. Uh, really, really enjoy listening to you, man. 
you're spot on with everything, man. Um, go Raiders. Rich, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. And yeah, Murphy is a dude in my mind. He's a great player. And if the Raiders walk away from round one with him, that's not going to be a bad thing, right? Maybe they trade up into round two uh, and get Penix because they, they pick at 44. I don't think he'll be there at 44. They may have to trade up into early in, in round two or maybe even the back end of round one to get him. And uh, just trade up just to you know, kind of keep it in perspective. Last year, the Raiders traded picks number 38 and 141 to the Colts to get up to number 35 in order to grab Michael Mayer. So if they're sitting there at 44 and they want to get up to, you know, around 33, 30, 34, even 32, right? The end of round one, uh, you kind of understand what it would take. Again, last year to go from 38 to 35, they traded picks 38 and 141 to the Colts for pick 35. So it's not a lot of uh, not a lot that they had to give up to move up those, uh, you know, few spots. So you can see, you can kind of do the math from there. It wouldn't be a whole hell of a lot to move up. It'd be a little bit more, obviously, to move up into the back of round one. But it's a definite possibility, something they could do for sure. But yeah, man, low key, I would love the Raiders to come away with Murphy out of Texas, the big defensive tackle. But then that means you don't get your quarterback, Jaden Daniels. So if you can't get Jaden, maybe the best option would be getting to Murphy and then just going from there and seeing what you can do at the quarterback position. Rich, thanks so much for the call. It's great to hear from you, my man. Up next, got a text from Will in the 816. Says, Q, my guy, just win Will at the 816 here. I hear you saying that we might move the picks 5 to 7 range and not the 2 to 3 range. Is that because we don't have a dance partner like you've been saying? Also, could we possibly move into 5 to 7 so we can get the 2 to 3? When was the last time a team did a double jump like that? Is that even possible? Q, I know you have an eye for talent, so you can put together a list of dudes that you're expecting to have success in the league after they're drafted, even if it's not by the Raiders. I feel like you should just keep a list of Q's dudes <laughs> and see which one hits and which ones don't. I feel like you always point out one or two guys a year that are absolute studs in the league. Thanks again, Q, for the content and letting me be a part of the show. I don't know about the other callers and textures, but I get super excited whenever you read my text on the podcast. Go Raiders. That's Will in the 816. Thanks so much, my man. I do appreciate that. And, yeah, I wish I had kept a list of the guys that I really pounded the table for because I've had some misses. Don't get me wrong. I've definitely had some misses, but I have had some hits, right? I mean, look, when uh, the Raiders drafted Cleve Farrell, I wanted them to draft Devin White. Right, and Devin White did some good things at Tampa Bay. Is he an ideal uh, linebacker? No. I wanted Quentin Williams. Obviously, he went one pick before the Raiders to the Jets, so I uh, can't fault the Raiders for not getting him. But, uh, you know, Devin White went number five, and I actually had selected him in our Locked On Raiders podcast or Locked On uh, mock draft just across the network. I had picked Devin White. I had picked Josh Jacobs, so that would have been two players. Uh, Josh Jacobs was my guy. I pounded the tail for him. The Raiders got him. I don't remember. I think I, I got a safety, but it wasn't Jonathan Abram. <laughs> so he wasn't on my radar at all. Jalen Hurts was always my guy. Uh, I do think Byron Murphy is going to be a dude this year. I really do. I think he's going to be exceptional. Terry on Arnold, I think he's going to be exceptional. He's a guy that I'm pretty fired up and excited about. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, let's see. Who else do I like? Um, I, I, I kind of like Joe Milton as well. Just because he has the arm strength, I know he's not ready to be a quarterback right now in the league, like a, a starter in the league, but I think he could turn into something. But I'm not 100% sure, right? Uh, and then Jaden Daniels, I'm a big fan of, but who's not a big fan of Jaden Daniels? And as far as your question about moving up, yeah, they could definitely be making a chess move. They could be definitely trying to get to the 5-7 to seven range to get to the 2-3 to three range, right? I asked Vic Tafer about that on Wednesday on my radio show, and he said, yeah, they could try to get halfway there now and then work on the other half away later. And that's definitely possible. I don't remember the last time it happened, but it did happen. So, and I, I do remember it wasn't too long ago. So yeah, it could definitely happen. I do believe that that could be the, the way that the Raiders are going about it, or they might just say, screw it and try to go all the way up and, and, and just do it at one time. But uh, obviously they're working on something, right? They're trying to come up with a master plan. We all know who they want to get. We'll see if they're able to go get their guy in Jane Daniels. But thanks for the text. I do appreciate you. Got a call from Tone, Tony Tone in the 661. He's calling to talk about some of the players the Bills let go on Wednesday and was a little interested in a couple of them. Here he is, Tone in the 661. What up, Q? It's your boy, Tone, from 661. Man, I'm just calling, man. I'm seeing a bunch of headlines. Uh, man, Bills releasing uh, um, some good players, man. Tredavious White. I mean, not too, not too long back, about a year or two ago, before the injury, you know, he was in a lockdown corner. A lockdown corner. Um, he'd be a media upgrade for us. I know it's up in the air with, with, you know, where we at in the draft. If we'd be able to, if we'd be able to trade up 
get Daniels. If we can't, I'd rather go with option B, and that's the stack of defense. The stack of defense. All right. Uh, even Jordan Poirier, he'd be a media upgrade in our secondary, too. I know we have Marcus Epps. I know you said you like him. Um, I don't know what, what, what they do with Trayvon Moore. Um, I'm pretty sure his fifth-year option is coming up soon. Uh you know, maybe would would a few of these good um, even Kevin Bayer, maybe would a few of these good safeties out on the board uh, on the market right now, we can make a, a, a sooner decision. You know, um, a lot of talent, more talent on the secondary is a good problem to have. So that's my take on it, man. If we if we can't if we can't get that get that guy in the draft, get a stud D tackle or stud uh, offensive tackle. And um, let's load up the D, man. I like Tredavious White from the Bills. Let me know what you think. Pair it up with um with Jones. I think he got a similar play style as um our other guy, man, Nate Hobbs. All right, tell me what you think, man. All right, Raider Nation. Just win, baby. Thanks for the call, my man. I appreciate you. I'm not big on Tredavious White. He's coming off an Achilles. Right, I think he's going to be a guy that late second tier um, free agents, maybe early third tier free agents, he'll be that guy. I don't see him as a guy that the Raiders are going to target early. Uh, free agency, man, you want to consider health, you want to consider age, and you want to consider money. Right, If you're going to invest some pretty good money, you're going to want him to be healthy and younger. If you're going to you know, just throw a year deal at him uh, for a league minimum, maybe a guy that's a little bit older and coming off of an injury like that, but – a DB coming off an Achilles injury, I'm not a big fan of. It's definitely not someone that I'm going to pound the table and say, hey, you should sign right away. As far as Poyer goes, he's a guy that the Raiders were interested a year ago. I don't know if they're still interested a year later. Uh, Trayvon Merrick, he doesn't have to worry about a fifth-year option. He was a second-round pick, so he doesn't have a fifth-year option. But him and Marcus Epps, I think they, Marcus Epps actually helped him get better in 2023, and I think he has an opportunity to really grow. And, I mean, it's a contract year. I'm excited about what Trayvon Merrick could do. He did some good things in 2023, even playing with a broken hand and came up with a couple interceptions uh, with basically one hand and another hand in the cast. I think Trayvon Merrick is starting to figure things out. Another year with Patrick Graham. It'll be the first time in his whole, I think, NFL career, college and NFL, where he's had a, a, the same defensive coordinator for three years in a row. That'll be amazing. And I think that he's really going to grow from that, especially have Marcus Epps play side by side with him. I think that's going to help. Also, don't forget the Raiders have, uh, you know, Chris Smith. Remember they drafted him in the sixth round out of Georgia. He didn't get any burn really as a as a safety. He was really a special teams guy. He can also compete for that safety position. So I think that they're pretty good at that spot. But thanks so much for that call. I do appreciate you and got time for one more text. This comes from Tomb Raider. Hey Q. Long-time listener, first time reaching out. I want to share a perspective that people who didn't or who don't like J.J. McCarthy for the Silver and Black are not thinking about. A lot of talent in the draft never quite translates to the NFL. But J.J. was not only coached by an NFL coach, 20 Michigan starters declared for this year's draft, and 18 were invited to the Combine. That's a lot of starting players, all coached by now an NFL coach. That tells me McCarthy is already playing at a high level and used to NFL talent around him. Plus, he's young, healthy, and has a high ceiling ahead. If that's the same reason people are scared he's a product of the strong Michigan system, forget about the Michigan run play and watch his plays when he does throw the ball. On third down under pressure, the guy's good. If people think he was only good because of the team, are they afraid uh, Raider players around the quarterback are not good enough? Because that'll be an issue with any quarterback. I understand Daniels may be the better fit because of the history with AP, but people shouldn't be asleep on JJ. He would also be a good grab in the draft for the silver and black. That comes from Tomb Raider, first time reaching out, longtime listener. Thanks so much. We appreciate the text. And, yeah, I know a lot of people are high on JJ. I'm not going to lie. I don't know where I'm at with him. I I, I like him, and I, I do respect that he was coached up by Harbaugh, who's now NFL head coach with uh, the Chargers, so I get that. Uh, I like that he could use his legs. I know he didn't wasn't asked to do a ton at Michigan, but he did do a lot of winning, and winning matters, right? So if he could be that guy, great. I don't know if he's got all the traits that AP and Tom Telesco are looking for in a quarterback because we just didn't see it. And so that's the thing about it. It's like a lot of folks say, yeah, he can do it. We just didn't see it. 
that means that we're just assuming he can do it because we didn't see it. That's the only thing that kind of makes me a little bit nervous when it comes to him. I do believe his leadership is there. Uh, he's a young dude. I think that he's going to be, you know, obviously NFL ready. He's already kind of used to the NFL game because of the coach that coached him up. Just makes me a little nervous because he didn't have to do what the Raiders might be asking him to do more times than not. Again, that doesn't mean he can't do it. It just means that I'm a little bit scared. Not scared. That's the wrong word. But just a little bit leery of if he's going to be able to do it consistently for the silver and black. But we'll see. Again, a lot of folks. I talked to a lot of folks at the Combine. Talked to a lot of folks on the radio every single day. A lot of people are very high on J.J. McCarthy. So you could be onto something. Tomb Raider, thanks so much for that. I appreciate you. And that's all I got time for on today's show. Still got a call from Sucker Free Raider. We'll get that on Friday show as we close out the week strong. Got a text from Heavy Chevy CB from the 510. We'll get that tomorrow as well, plus more calls and texts. We'll get more news and notes of the day surrounded in the silver and black. We'll have plenty more conversation. And then on Monday, we know it'll be, well, the legal tampering period will be opening up at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So we'll get to that as well. So until tomorrow, Raider Nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.